Hello YouTube, my name is Nick, and today I make my grand reopening of the YouTube channel. Uh, come back after a long absence that was longer than I expected it to be, and was longer than I wanted it to be. But of course, I moved. I moved in with my fiance to an apartment, different location of course. A little more metal looking, not all purple and pink. Although I'm sure some people really like that. But, uh... Yeah, longer hiatus than I expected it to be. So for this video, I'm just going to do some, I got some more metal stuff. Bought a lot of things recently. Um, I'm not going to show it all. I'm just going to show the most important things to me. Uh, these are all leases from this year. Um, either splits, reissues, new stuff, tapes, vinyl, cassettes. I got it all. So I got one cassette, one vinyl, a bunch of CDs. So let's get started. This first one, uh, hard to say, but it's probably my death metal album of the year right now. Um, extraordinary album. This is Gamma Geddon by Cytotoxin. Um, I'm about as big a Cytotoxin fan as there is. I absolutely loved Radiophobia, and this is more than a worthy uh, sequel to that album more radioactive technical brutal death metal for the the masses and this is so classy it's so brutal and manly sounding extremely well written the guitar players for cytotoxin should honestly stop playing guitar and go play something else because they're making everyone else look bad that they're so good it's, it's extraordinary you gotta trust me on this one the vocals on this you got guest vocals from um the guy from Benighted and Sven from Aborted on this. And both of those songs absolutely destroy everything. Every song on this album is so catchy, so brutal. You got slams, breakdowns, fast tech death stuff that makes other tech death bands jealous. Just, you gotta trust me on that one. Go check out the new Cytotoxin, Gamma Gittin. Uh, this next one I'm just gonna talk a little bit about because it's a big band. And uh, I actually really like them. I know some people don't. This is Unparalleled Universe by Origin. Um, I would say I like this about as equally as much as Entity. I wouldn't say this is my favorite album, but it's pretty close, honestly. This is a lot better than uh, Omnipresent. I also got this all signed. Um, I saw them on Summer Slaughter a couple weeks ago. Um, them and Angel Maker definitely killed the show. So amazing, amazing life life presence. Musicianship off the chain just makes you feel so insignificant that you can't do something like that. But this is a super brutal album, super fast. Uh, when I first listened to it, I kind of had a problem with the production, but it's kind of grown on me. It's it's a little cloudy sometimes. That's probably the only complaint I have about the album is the uh, the guitars can be turned way up sometimes. But anyway, that's a that's a pretty good album. Unparalleled Universe by Origin. This next one is a four-way split, and the only reason I'm really talking about this, not that it's a bad album or anything, is for one particular band that's on the split. But this is the new split between Abigor, Light Dark and Shade, Nightbringer, and Mortuous. And, as most of you probably should know, I Dark and Shade is probably the future of black metal, in my opinion. They have the best case to tell someone that technical black metal does exist. Some of the most detailed and creative and elegantly layered, fantastic musicianship that ever existed in all of the musical universe. That album... Um, Chem Sedget 1 is turbo masterpiece, 11 out of 10 in my opinion. And this is the uh, the newest material that they've put out in a little while. And the one song on here is such a barn burner, man. The speed and tenacity of this band is insane and is unparalleled in my opinion. Uh, the other three bands do a terrific job as well, but I love that Dark and Shade heads and heads above the other bands 
I just want to talk about this just because of them. If you like any of these bands, check this out. This is definitely the best split of the year right now, in my opinion. Fantastic black metal or all lovers. Any kind of black metal lover will love that split because there's a little bit of everything. This next one is uh, two or three. Could be number one on my end of the year list. This is absolute magic on CD. This is Visions Wallow and Symphonies of Night by Ingurgitating Oblivion. Absolutely delicious album. I cannot get enough of this album. Very long songs. There's 10, 20 minute long songs on this album. I don't even know if you can see that spine. It's so bright. But this is very experimental and atmospheric and kind of dissonant death metal, which I'm not a fan of dissonant death metal by any means, really. I think it's extremely overplayed and overhyped for the most part. But everyone doing their part on this album is what makes it so magical. This is an almost uncomparable album. Uh, I hope more people talk about this once the, the word get out gets out. It hasn't been out that long. It was released by Blue Tip because they can do no wrong. But the... the the vocals on this album are fantastic. I love the vocals on this album. Extremely recognizable, unique. They don't sound generic. Uh, the production is immaculate. I cannot say a bad thing about the production on this. Everything is where it should be. Uh, the guitars, and especially the drums, are masterclass. This is probably my, my uh, top drum performance of the year so far absolutely magical. And another thing that makes this album so great are the uh, the effects. Very strange, spacey, otherworldly kind of effects on this album that are not cheesy by any means. And uh, I'm usually not a fan of weird effects like that on especially dissonant death metal because I don't really like dissonant death metal, but this was like two bad things making a godly thing. And I cannot say enough good things about this. I've listened to this probably more than 50 times. It is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about that. I've probably said that 100 times now. But I'll stop saying it. Next album. The uh, first and only slam album I have to talk about today. This is Hypothermal Dissection by Dysformectomy. This is the limited uh, acid version. It has the different coloring variation, 70 out of 100. This is just some great, classy, well-written, and perfectly structured one-man slam. Um, it's not like all the other ectomy bands that have nothing going for them and they're just really generic. This one actually has a lot of merit. Uh, it's not a joke band. A lot of joke slam bands are coming around now and I don't really like that. So yeah, if you like slam, just form ectomy. You're not going to be disappointed. It's not that long. It's, it's uh, standard slam. There's nothing wrong with that. This next one is a very weird one for me to try to explain. Uh, but I'll try my best because I think I found a pretty good facsimile for it. This is Entropy of Chaos and Salt by Nin. N-Y-N. Um, the best way I can describe this is if Psy, the weird Japanese band, not the K-pop guy, and Infinite Annihilator started a band together, this is what it would sound like. Extremely spastic, extremely weird, uh, disjointed songwriting and all kinds of experimentation. Just bizarre vocals and maybe it's sometimes a little uh, guitar tools or pro tools I mean sounding. <clears throat> extremely fast, extremely experimental. Uh, I guess the final verdict on a genre I'd call this is somewhere between like tech death and experimental death metal. Extremely weird. I believe it's one man. Um, let's go check that out, please. You'll, you'll be doing yourself a favor if you check that out. This next one is another one super high up on my list as well as it should be for many other people. And this is another one that's pretty darn difficult to try to explain to someone. This is the new Chernobog. Uh, very recognizable artwork if you've been around metal recently. This was released by Voidhanger, little spider lady, whatever you want to call her. But 
I guess you would call this somewhere in between, like, Blackened Funeral Doom or something like that. It's very bizarre to try to explain this album. Every song on here is very long, 10, 15, 20 minutes long. Uh, it's four tracks, and it is an absolute monolithic beast of an album try to try to get through. Um, I do recommend listening to it in one sitting because it's very cohesive, although it is very long. Um, cannot say how this makes me feel, just very uncomfortable. Um, every song has its purpose and never repeats itself. And although I say it's somewhere like Black and Funeral Doom, there's all kinds of genres on this. Uh, the third song, Non-Existence is Warmth, uh, reminds me a lot of the song uh, off the newest AMSG, um, Divine Madness Transcends. Uh, very smooth, experimental, kind of jazzy, very atmospheric and different sounding from the rest of the album. So if you want to try to get into some weird suffocating black and death doom something or other, Maybe check out that song. Um, of course, everything will be in the description. This next one um, definitely took me by surprise. Uh, I was not very familiar with this band until this came out. But this is Tabernaculum by Rebirth of Nefast. Uh, the best way I can try to describe this is it's kind of like the Ruins of Beverass' first album, Unlock the Shrine, where it's kind of like slower, mid paced strange as heck black metal but i just want to show you the booklet in this because there's a lot of glossiness in this booklet this digipack and booklet is extraordinary so high quality the paper on this is delicious uh very thick stock every song has its own little art piece but this is another extremely long album and if you like just weird black metal it's extremely long extremely complicated to try to explain and this is definitely for you uh, i don't know if this has gotten much traction or not but it definitely deserves to be um yeah birth in a fast with tabernaculum this next one shouldn't take anyone by surprise that i like this this is the new artificial brain with uh infrared horizon easily the best album artwork of the year right now uh, just this one snippet of a picture tells a huge, dramatic tale. And if you know Artificial Brain, you'll know what kind of sound you're getting into. Very dense, very complicated, um, brutal, technical, whatever the heck you want to call this. Uh, this is a lot smoother feeling than uh, Labyrinth Constellation was. A lot more, dare I say, progressive elements and uh, catch your songwriting, but it's not like them selling out or anything. The sounds totally artificial brain. They haven't changed a thing, and they're just maturing as a band. And this album is an absolute jaw-dropper from start to finish. Can't say enough good things about this. If you know artificial brain, you'll know what you're getting into. So yeah, that's uh, artificial, no? artificial brain with... Uh, and for Horizon. My brain just quit working. Alright, this next one is technically a compilation, but I'm going to talk about this anyway, because I don't think I've ever talked about a compilation on here before. But I believe this thing is called Cosmic Cornucopia by Slugge. This is the full discography of Slugge, essentially. They're three full lengths. It's so released by Willow Tip. Right down there. And I don't know how many people talk about slugs because i feel like i haven't heard much about them and i had to discover them on my own but i don't know if people think it's a, a parody band or they don't take themselves seriously because it's about slugs but it is an absolute master class band the guitars and the drums and the very distinctive extremely throaty gutturals and the extraordinary clean singing that remind me a lot of mastodon uh, I've seen this compared to, like, way more extreme Mastodon, if you can kind of picture that. A lot more blackened, a lot more 
death metal sides, crazy guitar playing, crazy drums. Uh, it's a two-piece. Just you gotta trust me on this one. Uh, it is not so serious subject matter, but uh, the lyrics and the songs speak for themselves. Um, you don't need you don't need me telling you how amazing it is because it's extraordinary. Uh, all the albums sound pretty similar. You can tell it's a sluggish album, but they're all a little different in their own means, uh, songwriting-wise. I would say, man, it's hard to say. The second or third album is probably my favorite. I probably listen to the second album more, so I guess I'd say it's my favorite. And the next thing I'm going to show you is something very special to me. This is a band I never thought was going to come back, and this was the band that I wanted the most to come back. This is the new Ackercock. It's finally here. I cannot believe it. Um, this is Renaissance and Extremists. This is the big old book edition that comes with three CDs. But um, maybe the classiest band to ever exist. One of the most mysterious bands and uh, undescribable and recognizable bands in all of extreme music, in my opinion. I worship those guys. And this is a very different feeling album than uh, pretty much anything they've ever done before. But it definitely still feels like an Ackerhawk album. A lot thrashier than any of their previous work, I think. Uh, a lot more clean passages, a lot more clean singing, and his singing is much improved. Not that it was bad before. But this book just essentially details the, the band's history, if you want to get into that. Uh, I definitely recommend this. It's on a big old book. It's huge. has a bunch of foiling. If you're a fan of the band, you should 100% buy that. Uh, extraordinary album. I can't believe it's here. Um, this next one is my only tape I'm going to show. This is the new self-title from Hell. Uh, if you've watched this channel much, I'm trying not to get too much glare on it. You know I like Hell. Um, suffocating. Evil. as Heck. Disgusting. Blackened sludge. Funeral doom. Something or other. I feel like I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Excuse me. But this is technically their fourth full length. But this is actually just self-titled. It's not Hell 4. It's just Hell. And I feel like this is going to end up being my favorite Hell album, to be honest. It's very complete. It's more full sounding. Uh, the production is uh, a little improved. But totally love that band. Uh, they can do no nothing wrong. A double negative, no nothing. Yeah, it has a very delicious tape, actually. I don't think I showed it. It was fully printed. Sorry there's so much glare now, but I'm right in front of the window. Extraordinary album. Every song on here is actually very different uh, compared to the rest of the Hell discography. It's still evil as heck, still heavy as heck, and... The vocals still make you want to go see Aaron as a throat doctor. But man, evil album. But this next album I'm going to show you is my album of the year so far. Uh, heads above any other album, I think, besides the Ingurgitating Oblivion. Uh, magical. This is, this is a true masterpiece for the metal community. And hopefully more people know about this. This is Exuvia by the Ruins of Everast. Good lord, guys. I don't think there's a, a more well-respected artist in all of metal music than uh, Alex von Mylenbald from this band. He is essentially a metal god. He has perfected a sound that no one knew needed to be perfected, and he has an untouchable discography. Uh, every album of his is a 10 out of 10, and every album has its own adjectives you could assign to it. Not all the albums sound similar or even the same. But I was a little hesitant with this album at first because um, the first song that came out, I think it was Towards Malakia, um, I didn't really get it. It sounded so much different than anything else he's done. I thought maybe, you know, maybe this was going to be the one that didn't live up to the hype of uh, Ruins of Everast. But of course he has to prove everyone wrong, and you never judge something until it's a final product. 
And this is one of the most magical and it's hard to explain, man. The the influences on this album very very differently. There's a lot of trance, there's a lot of tribal on this album. Uh, extremely dark, extremely uncomfortable feeling. This is probably the most experimental album of his, I'd have to say. Uh, there's more female vocals than ever, which are very nice actually. Uh, the fourth song, The Pithy is Pale Wolves. If that doesn't give you the chills, I don't know what will. That is one of the most magical songs I've ever heard in my life. Every song on here has its own dynamic feel to it, and it deserves to be like a metal hall of fame, to be honest. Every every song on that album is a masterpiece. I can't get enough of it. It's been on constant repeat forever. But that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, my next video is actually going to be a review of that album, and I hope you look forward to that. Uh, I won't take as long next time to make a video, and I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.